I know we are holding down the year, and then so uh, we might not get all of you even next week, depending on the circumstance. So in our midst today, we have the the, the operations officer at CID, MD, ASP, Levy, and of course the Delta 3, the third in command. When we say Delta 3, we're talking about the third in command at the operations of all the department. Is um, Dr. Senesi, and of course we have the Deputy Inspector General of Police, um, the first female Deputy Inspector General, she's here with us, Madam Betty Tue, and of course the person who's going to chair, and uh, when the IGP will have left, uh, is um, AID Farselu, and of course the Chief Executive is here as well, like I said, and Dr. Amos Michael Sobula, to be part of the press conference for today. Um, but before we move further, can we observe individual silent prayers in our own way? So let me now hand over the mic to uh, AIG Farselu, who is going to take us through the uh, press briefing. Um, good afternoon, I am uh, Inspector General of Police, Deputy Inspector General of Police, senior colleagues of the SFP, members of Fort Estate. Um, once again, you are welcome to this press conference. Um, as always, I want to appreciate the fact that you are coming to us to come and market us to the public. This one is special because I'm sure this is one of the first press conferences where we have the Chief Executive Officer himself and the Deputy Inspector General to, to attend. So with, without much ado, I want to actually invite the, the Inspector General of Police to address this press conference. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Um, good afternoon, um, the Fourth Estate. Yeah, uh, let me align myself with the existing protocols. I am here today to talk to the press for one simple reason. What makes it two, I will explain as well. But the most important one is somebody insulting a female journalist, a female citizen, a female personality whom I have sanctioned to be investigated. On behalf of the Sierra Leone police, the management, the rank and file, we condemn that in a very strong term. We condemn it for someone to be insulting a female personality in this society. It's unacceptable and we we'll investigate it. He's been investigated and he is almost on the run. We have searched for him. We have used his telephone number to call him to come and explain why he had or why he insulted that female personality. Well, I have asked the CID and they have issued arrest warrant for him and have also asked media one to declare him wanted and i have put some of five million leons for someone who will help me to know where he has hidden himself or who can help us get him arrested and bring him so that he can be charged to court that is unacceptable and this goes for each and every one of us in this country, 
It's high time we start to give respect to women. We want them as wives. They are our mothers. Then, yes, we can insult them in that manner. No, that is unacceptable. And I would want to ask the fourth estate to help me propagate our position with regards to people who are bent on molesting female in this country. The man is called LJ. I, I don't know his full name. That is what is popularly known. He's been declared wanted for the kind of words he used on the lady at 98.1. I couldn't bear to listen that twice. I couldn't bear it. I almost shed tears because when someone insults a woman in that manner, no, that's unacceptable. My second message is for people to understand that census is a process that is ongoing and refusing to be counted is a crime. I'm sure the um, legal person in the police had explained the law to the people of this country. Yet the Sierra Leone are still not understanding. We have made some arrests for people who have been making audios, videos, going around, and some will be charged to court, and some are on being investigated and may likely be going to court. We are advising people to be law-abiding citizens. This is not something that people will joke with it. Census, if you don't know the correct figure, how will you be able to distribute the country wealth? How will you be able to? I think uh, people must be able to understand that. And let me warn all those that are banned in obs obstructing, inciting people that it is unacceptable. If you do so, we will get you arrested, investigate you, and charge you to court. I'm sure the prescribed law prescribes what are the penalties. Remember that incitement is an indictable offense. That can take you up to high court. Incitement is an indictable offense. So these are the two messages. I think I should come here today and talk. I have able-bodied men and women who are very much experienced to talk to the press, but I thought I was touched with the kind of thing that uh, that um, man, I will not call him a gentleman, did to that woman. We will continue to condemn that. Uh, we are warning let us behave like responsible citizens. If you are an artist, I think you are there to entertain people, not with <laughs> vulgar words. So those who are habit of doing that, the time is up. I want to thank you all, and uh, I hope you will help us to disseminate this important short message for our people. Let us join together and make Sierra Leone a better place. Our policing style is people-centeredness, and we think we will continue to partner with our people that we do police. We believe the police will not win. We believe the police will not win, no matter what you do. But we will continue to do our best. Even against your wish, we must provide you protection. So sometimes let's be very realistic with the police and embrace them as our police. Look the name implied Sierra Leone police. It's not a Guinean police, not a Liberian police, but Sierra Leone police. And Sierra Leone police is policing the people in Sierra Leone. So, uh, I mean, twins can make quarrel, critique us, Critique us, but do it in a very responsible manner. 
it is only God and fools that cannot change. We think, we take all criticism in good faith and use it as a platform to improve on our operational strategies. Once again, thank you very much. Shut up. Esteet, you are welcome. Uh, we have a very, we have a very short, we have a very short agenda actually because some of the key players are, are absent today, but we, we are going to make use of this time. Well, like I started in my introduction, you are welcome, and maybe this might be the last press conference for 2021, um, as we usher into 2022. Inshallah, maybe we might have one, because in this country, when you're alive, every day is a special occasion. Now, I will give a couple of updates on our activities in the most recent time. In the first place, the IG was talking about the midterm census. Well, I want to say that since this pronouncement of the census was made, it has been fraught with challenges. We have we have received threats around the process, both audio and video threats surrounding the process. And we as police, we have a responsibility to make sure we we provide security for the process, just like we provide security for the elections. And in fulfillment of that responsibility, we have stepped up our operations. We have uh, activated, especially around the start of the, the press call and the midterm census, we have activated our uh, intelligence operatives and also members of the community who are working with us in our local police partnership boards. To, to provide us with information about those who are so desirous to derail the process or to incite others not to take part. Uh, in the light of that one, we have made several arrests. We have investigated several people. They have been charged and they are presently appearing in court. And recently we had, uh, there is a consultant of political parties court, their membership they are on radio and they, they discussed issues around this midterm census, basically inciting people not to take part. So we instituted an investigation into them, the likes of Dr. Ansane, Dennis Wright, um, Diana Konomani, uh, uh, what is this, uh, Olufumi, Cole, all of those ones. Yeah, his family called the school. We invited all of them to the CID. We have obtained statements from them. We have compiled a file. We are giving them a special treatment because those ones are heads of political parties. So, but they should realize by now that if the other members of the society are going to court for such an act, they are not above the law. One of the tenets of the rule of law is equality before the law. And the other one is supremacy. So they too, their file has been compiled. It has been forwarded to the Office of the Attorney General and Minister of Justice for perusal and legal advice. And it is possible, very possible, that we are going to prosecute because their conduct is an infringement on the uh, Census Act to which their leadership at the time uh, the former president, Anderson Baikuma, subscribed. And all of them supported that particular census. And it is, uh, the president has a right to ask for a census at any time he's advised by the Minister of Development to do so. So what is happening is not unusual, it's normal, and it is legal. So we are not going to allow people who are ill-motivated to derail this process. So. As I talk to you now, the feedback we are getting from across the country, especially where we have made arrests and we've charged some cases to court, 
the census is going on. No matter how slow it will be, but it is going on. That is very <coughs> satisfactory for us. Secondly, I want to talk about the festive season. This particular time of the year, December, is very busy for us. Of course, we are busy throughout the year, but for December up until January, it's very busy for us because we have lots of activities, lots of issues coming up, especially when we are, we are expecting uh, people from the diaspora to pour in to come and spend the Christmas uh, holiday with their family members. So as an organization which has the responsibility to, to provide security for its citizens, we have uh, taken a couple of actions. In the first place, uh, we have in Freetown, for example, we have Freetown East and Freetown West. But what we have done also, we have divided Freetown into four zones. In addition to the east and the west, we have divided Freetown into four zones, and into each of those zones, we have assigned an assistant inspector general, which means we have um, apparently brought down some activities. We have collapsed some offices at, head at headquarters so that they can join their colleagues in the east and the west to provide over supervision with a very clear mandate. Their mandate includes, but not limited to, assist, assisting the regional commanders in planning the policy strategies for the entire regions during this festive period, to revisit the already existing operational plans of the regional commanders, traffic management and crime management in their respective uh, regions, zones, to work with the regions to operationalize the CBD operation plan in preventing motorcycles from entering the CBD to liaise with regional commanders to enforce the implementation of Operation Restore Order, which was issued on the 6th of October 2021, and then also to liaise with regional commanders to enforce the presidential order on all unregistered vehicles and motorcycles, including those who cover their number plates or are without number plates. And of course, in as much as we are regulating the conduct of other people, we also have a responsibility to regulate the conduct of our own people. So, which means they are also to monitor the discipline, attendance, and regularity of our personnel in their workplaces during this period under review. And they, can, they are expected to perform any other tasks which might be assigned to them by the Inspector General of Police. So, we've done that. And that one started one week ago. In addition to that one, the Director of Operations has developed a generic operational order which has been cascaded to all regional commanders so, commanders so that they can customize it to fit their own regions because all regions don't have the same uh, crime pattern or characteristics or special distribution of crime. So uh, the option is here, it has been cascaded to all uh, regional commanders for them to uh, work on it to adapt it to fit their own respective regions. Then of course in every region, especially at the regional headquarters, we have created quick reaction forces. These forces have been established for prompt response to public order challenges. So we don't want to be caught off guard when something is happening, for example, or within Freetown East, then we start to muster people. We have made sure people are mustered in those places so that we can nip anything in the board. And also we have put out more intelligence operatives so that we can collect information timely and disseminate to the appropriate authorities for the appropriate action. Um, another thing we've done is uh, along the beach, we've erected a police post along the beach, which we call the Gulf Police Post. Uh, the beach is very notorious for crime, and therefore we have actually deployed personnel in that uh, beach police post with a view to combat criminal activities uh, along that particular beach. Well, the golf club also has supported our efforts by raising the height of the wall because what is to happen is if you stop along that road, especially along the golf course area, and you want to ease yourself, it's very likely that people will just emerge from behind the wall to, to cause havoc on you to snatch your phone or to even snatch your wallet or rings or even injure you. 
So we've done that. Then of course we have uh, embarked or we have intensified our efforts to crack down on these unlicensed vehicles in, a, in fulfillment of the presidential declaration together with the SLRC. Such vehicles are taken to the SRC compound where they remain packed until they are registered. This time, we are not going to prefer charges because if we prefer charges, they will go to court and they are going to find them for, for example, driving an unregistered vehicle that you are asked to pay 250, they will pay and they walk away. So this time, we are packing the vehicles when you have registered the vehicles and then you are picking them. Some are packed at Aberdeen, some are plumbing and we've taken some to uh, SRC compound. Then also, uh, we are trying to reduce, I cannot say to totally eliminate bikes within the CBD. Uh, policing is not an easy job, it's beset with a lot of challenges. So each time we are doing, uh, you know, for every virus there is an antivirus. So each time we are trying to sanitize the city, we have the virus, these bike riders, they are going the other way to make sure they disrupt our program. But we will not relent. So those operations to reduce bikes in the CBD, they remain, they remain extant. Then of course, um, moving forward, we are supposed to, or we are preparing for the forthcoming uh, National Delegates Conference of the SLPP. It was scheduled for the 22nd and 23rd of December, but uh, it has been shifted to 29th and the 30th of December at Galena's Paradise in Bo. For that one also we've done a couple of things. First of all, we've done a threat assessment of what it's going to be like, the situation, although it's a party affair, but we expect threats within the same party. And then of course we have made another we have made an operational plan to guide the deployment of our personnel before, during and after that particular convention. So we've prepared for that one. And then of course we, we have been talking about having an interactive session between uh, uh, Fort Estate and the SLP. Uh, we've moved considerably on that one. The last time the Slash President was here we, in this press conference. And after that, uh, the SLP media one uh, summoned a meeting wherein he was in attendance and the former Brazil, Kevin Lewis, and a couple of other guys we have adopted a particular strategy how we are going to do it. So we are working on a couple of issues. Hopefully, hopefully by January, we are actually going to drop that one. January, inshallah, we are going to drop it. And then of course, um, this one is also an update on what the Sierra police is doing. In addition to working with Interpol, uh, there is a program which has been in existence in other West African countries, which we call the West African Police Information System, WAPIS. WAPIS is a system which is run by people who keep data on criminals in the South region. We have not been part of it because of a couple of challenges. So we were supported by Interpol, and WAPIS provided the Sierra Police a large quantity of equipment to expand WAPIS operations in Sierra Leone. We had, we did a feasibility study together with a delegation of Interpol WAPIS from uh, Abuja uh, two years ago. And in Sierra Leone, we have identified seven workstations one at Ross Road, one at Longley, one at Sierra Quarters. Then of course, Bo, Kenema, Oloko, and Makini. The essence of this expansion of War Peace into Sierra Leone is to, to share information about criminals and criminal activity. So the system is automated such that if they profile somebody in Nigeria for a crime and he happens to come to Sierra Leone and commit another crime here, of course, when he's profiled in Nigeria, we will see it from here also that this person has been profiled, profiled in Nigeria. So if he comes here and we put this information in the system, it will pop up. So that is the fastest way to actually share information on crime. Interpol is also very good, but this one is like, it's happening at the same time, just like the Lotus system in the United Nations missions. So we've 
gone far with that one. Over the past one week, we have been able to activate three workstations. We are working with fixed solutions to provide the internet facility. They have done that one in CID, Rushwood, and uh, Lomley. And we have deployed personnel who've trained over the past year, we've trained like 60 people to actually man this particular system. And these 60 people, they are now fully deployed. Just last week, the, the WAPIS representative from Abuja was here, Dr. Mohamed Yansane, is the Iranian. He's the one who is championing the effort because he's the one who actually stood his ground to make sure that we also benefit from a, a crime sharing information system. But it's not only the police, we are also incorporating the ACC and, and immigration because they too, they keep record on criminals. So we also have uh, workstations at ACC and at uh, uh, um, immigration. So for now in Freetown, five workstations have been activated. The SLP has seven, so added to immigration and ACC, which makes it uh, nine. So fixed solutions next week will travel up country to make sure that all the other up, uh, workstations up country are provided with internet facility. And then early next year in January, second week in January, we are going to have trainers from Nigeria to come and do a refresher training. They are coming up obviously from the WAPIS headquarters in Abuja to come and make sure our people are refreshed because learning, you learn something, you don't practice it, it becomes extinct. So we are going to refresh them for like two weeks then we are going to officially commission the system. Uh, hopefully, we want to we will have the vice president to commission the system to see it at work. So that is how far we have gone. For the other updates on crime, the, the, the OC1 of the CID is here. So we will give you an update on that one. So I thank you for your attention on my side. So we move to the program. It's now my pleasure to invite the OC1 of CID to give us updates on a few things they are investigating. Good afternoon again to our user press conference. Uh, chairman and AIG Crime Services, uh, Media One and Media Two. Uh, Dr. Senesi, head of the operations at the OSD headquarters, senior colleagues, police officers, and Fort Estates. Uh, in addition to what the IG and the crime services said, I have two important cases over the weekend I will highlight here at the press conference. One is <coughs> One is an alleged incitement. On Saturday, 11 December 2021, at about 15.30 hours, Assistant Commissioner of Police, Musa Bandabla, Local Unit Commander at Waterloo Division, together with ASP Sama, OSD and team, brought in one Ibrahim Sori Kuruma of Fogo Village of Nitin with one back techno spark six go mobile phone for an alleged offense of incitement. It is yeah. reported, it was reported that on Friday, 10th December 2021 at a Fogo village, Fogo village, the suspect published a video of himself on social media, especially worship, um, persuading members of the public not to take part in the ongoing 2021 mid and term census in Sierra Leone. This matter has been charged to court. We don't waste time of that. Another case is an alleged food poisoning. Food poisoning. On Sunday, 12 December 2021, at about 1100 hours, ASP Kuruma attacked OSD headquarters and team arrested and brought in one Aisha Tarawali of number 31 Old Rui Line, Brookfields, and Hawa Bangura of Upper Local Town, Olintin, and reported that the latter sold cooked rice to the general public suspected to be poisoned 
upon which five OSD personnel and 11 civilians, after eating the said food, fell to the ground and became unconscious. Now, the alleged poisoning food sample is in the custody of a scientific support unit who have been contacted for their expert advice. All victims have been discharged from respective hospitals, emergency, and, and Connaught Hospital, and then other hospitals. They have been discharged. So the matter is still under investigation, awaiting for the result of the scientific support unit. These are the two cases added to what the, AI, the IG and Crime Services said. Thank you. Um, thank you for that update. Now, let us have uh, Dr. Senesi, Assistant Commissioner, to update us. Director of Crime Services, colleagues, senior officers, members of the Fourth Estate, as part of our constitutional mandate, that is the SLP to reinforce law and order, protect lives and properties. On the 10th December and 11th December 2021, at 22 hours, myself and one section of quick response team, together with C CDID personnel, on board SLP 076, left OSD headquarters for routine patrol within the western part of Freetown. At 2222, myself and team arrived at the written checkpoint and we were able to effect an arrest of one unregistered vehicle, unregistered and unlicensed vehicle, and it was handed over to the checkpoint commander for further investigation. We also proceeded to grafting. We impounded two vehicles at Grafton checkpoint and two motorbikes which were unlicensed and unregistered and handed them over to the traffic department at Grafton for further investigation. <coughs> at 01.20 hours, the third team proceeded to do a checkpoint we effected an arrest of two vehicles and two motorbikes, which were unlicensed and unregistered. We took them to the Joe police post, handed them over to the traffic department for further investigation. Uh, on 15 December 2021, personnel deployed at the Juba checkpoint on MVCP duties, conducted a vehicle search on vehicle with registration number APR128. During the course of the search, they were able to discover one pistol, an automatic Bruni 96 pistol with one empty magazine, one Ab Abib Temu of number five Elizabeth Lane Godrich was the driver in charge of the said vehicle. Vehicle exhibit and driver were taken to the Lombly police station for further investigation. Currently, we are supporting all police operations, both Freetown East and Freetown West. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, um, you've heard from us. We probably want to hear, probably, I said probably. In other words, it's not mandatory. We also we might want to hear from you, or you probably want to tell us something. So it's your turn to ask questions. Ask questions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. I'm Muhammad Amadou. I'm writing from Beyond Borders. I'm supporting on the idea. Just ask who are. We strongly condemn the. The attack on the uh, verbal attack on uh, Mrs. Asma Sims. Well, we did hear him talking about the recent attack and beating of one of our police officers.